clean and confident in me. So I was like, yeah, <laughs> no matter how poor I was, I still found that, ow, I still found that cash. <laughs> okay. So okay. we have more people coming and we wait about uh, two, three minutes and then we'll start. It is okay with you? Sounds yep. good. Yep. Okay. Because I see that more and more people are coming. Uh, I think Raphael was supposed to join. I was just looking on Facebook uh, and I, I had to check Facebook again because I was going by the old information. Uh, but there's a new password. So I'm hoping he has that. It was a new password and a new ID because of my mistake. So I created a new meeting. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah. Let me text him and, and see. Okay, we have Zach Co Norma. Okay. Hi, Zach. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? Doing good. Okay. Okay. Okay, we'll start in one minute, okay? So Chris, I want to be paid twice for this because I did it before one hour with only two persons because of my mistake, okay? <laughs> we'll give you some of our stimulus check. How about that? Uh, yeah, the one that I'm not getting. <laughs> Come on. They give the airline industry a $25 billion bail, 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 and then small biz businesses, they were ran out of cash. Yeah. I'm like, okay, it figures. The government's definition of small business is not the same as my definition of small business. <laughs> no, uh, my, my, my micro businesses need to get uh, rec recognized. And we're trying to get more money, uh, but I think Congress convened, so that kind of stopped at everything. There are a lot of stuff for the small businesses. Yeah. Maybe once they convene, we'll get, get some more. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I think that they need, I, I mean, I, I read somewhere that uh, my micro and small businesses employ like a, um, a, 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 80% of the population. So it's stupid for, for them not to. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the truth? Us mom and pop shops are dying and just, we're, and we need the help more, more than. <laughs> so, you are okay? Yeah. We can start? Yes, okay. please. I'll stop talking now. <laughs> For the best communication, I have made a PowerPoint. Okay, you can stop me in the middle if you don't understand something or if my English is too English, okay, and you don't understand, please tell me and I will repeat, okay, for the best of the conversation. So we have two more joining. Okay, let's see. I knew, how, how many of you, you have experience from Zoom? Steve, do you have experience? Zoom. No, not, well, a little bit. Did a couple of conversations this week, but that's it. Maybe you want to be the host, if you have experience. I'm searching for, with someone with experience. <laughs> no, I told you, I did one Zoom. My kids are experienced, they didn't know how to do it. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to, I, I I'm, hope I'm that, trying on my doing it on my phone so we don't have um i think when you do it on your computer don't you get to see everybody yes at one time yeah you can't do that on your phone am i correct uh, i don't know okay, have you're just saying whoever like you guys are looking at your phone and whoever's talking pops up is that how this yeah works? okay 
Uh, I'm on my computer and there's a little scroll at the top. Uh, not everybody is showing a picture, so I imagine they didn't. Yes, maybe they have their, their own camera closed. So they can hear us, they can see us, but you don't see them. Okay, it is an option, they can do it. Maybe they want some privacy. Okay. That's what it looks like on a computer. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you're I'm on the starting, computer. Okay. So. Oh, okay, that's better. Okay. So you see all my PowerPoint? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, right, so let's start at the beginning. Here we are. So I'm going to talk to you about the digital orthodontic appliances. In the last years, with digital impressions, we are passing from the analog work that we are doing to the digital orthodontic appliances. For me, it is not something different, it is an evolution. As we work with our clients, we are work with a software, we are creating something <clears throat> that is for, for this kind of appliances, there's a lot of demand. So I think in the next years, everybody eventually, they will make it. Every lab in US, in the Europe, they will create some kind of, of these appliances because the clients ask for it. So we have, what, why I think that digital appliance is a necessity, we are passing from this to this, from an analog impression to a digital impression. And when, as a lab, you have to, to handle a digital impression, you have also to create something that is digital on it. Another question is why? We are doing it because there is a, an increase in the sales of intraoral scanners, we see a 10% increase in sales. So eventually, every one of your clients, it will be an intraoral scanner user. And when they become intraoral scanner users, they want to make everything digitally. That was my experience from it. So if there is a demand in the market, it, here, this is a funny, funny picture. This is the lab make owners, okay. If there is a market, there's a market maker, there is a risk factor because you have to invest in it, but there is a profit. And there is a profit from, from the digital appliances. So I have to handle Zoom at the same time. So, <laughs> If there is a demand, we have to deliver to this, okay? We have to deliver to the increased demand. What are the benefits from the digital orthodontic appliances? And as we talk now in Zoom, we can receive an email because of the technology. So everyone that uses an internal scanner, they can send you an email, okay? You can receive it from everywhere in the world. And potentially, every scan user is, is your client, even if it is in Greece or everywhere in the world. So you can use 3D printing to make your models and the machine to make what you are doing with your hands. So analog VS is that it is not VS, it is not one against the other. We are learning from the analog technique to pass it to the digital. Everything that we are doing in the analog technique is useful. We are learning to use a software, but we need yeah, all, our knowledge, all, our, all of our knowledge to pass it into it, to create something. If you, know, if you don't know how oh, to yeah. Awesome. Okay. So, if there is a, everything... There's a... Um, yes? I've noticed with Zoom, if you mute, everybody else mutes, you come through better. Because every time there's noise with everybody else, it distracts you. Okay. If you could get everybody else to mute, that would be helpful. Okay. More. Let's see. Chat. Pause it. Record. Disable. Gotcha. Mine's down in the lower left-hand corner. The bottom left-hand corner is a mute button.
Socrates, you muted yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mute yourself. All of us should be mu muted and not you. Okay. And where is this? You are good now. Okay, we can go on. Okay, so we need to make an intro scan and the creation of an STL file. Sending the scan in the lab by mail or participate in a cloud. In 3Save, they have a cloud, so you can participate there and accept the scan in the cloud, uh, the scan. Accept the scan and creation of the 3D model, design the appliance using a CAD software, export the design in an STL file, printing in SLS or SLM. The difference between SLS and SLM is selective laser sintering, that is meaning that the two particles are not combined, are only combined, not melting together from the laser. And in the SLM is selective laser melting. The two parts are melting together finally. Okay, this is the difference between the two techniques. Post-processing the printed framework with rotary tools, polishing and welding auxiliaries expansion screws and attachments okay and we are starting from the first option of the workflow receiving the stl file important into the system and then the first step is to make the insertion direction for the appliance okay is this arrow here then we have to create the band with this kind of splines. Okay. It's very simple. It's by click, 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 you create this spline. And then with a preview, you have the band. Okay. So, second step is to creating the bar. By the same logic, you add clicks and you create this plan, you can manipulate this, these little points and change the shape of the bar. In all the steps, you can have a preview and you can make the shape, you can make it a, according to your uh, knowledge and according to your fantasy. This is the bar. And then this is the step that you combine the two pieces together. You can use uh, sculpting tools to even make it smoother. You have an option in the appliance designer in this kind of, you can add material, you can smooth it, you can cut it. Uh, basically, you can do anything that you want with the sculpting tools. And you see that the surface here is smoother now. We repeat from the other side to make the other side to complete the appliance. The same procedure with the spline, we create the band. Adjust the bar to any shape. You see that this shape is according to this side. It's different from the other. Combine. And then we have to export in an STL. Everything that is exported in an STL, it can be printed. We are sending the for SLS or SLM, and this is the final result. Okay, this metal part here. This plate with the parts must be placed on a furnace for a secondary thermal treatment in 960 Celsius. I don't know how much is Fahrenheit. I, I always confuse with Fahrenheit. Okay. So this is directly after printing. 
And this is how it is after grinding and polishing. We are using two carbide bars, one crossed one and one fine one. And the rubber like this, this is the deco glass polishers. Okay. And then at the end, we are using a lathe to polish the whole thing and shop. Then we check the fit on the model and then we bend the screw as usual, as we do it in a plaster model. I'm using a TIG welding machine, the book, to weld the screw on the framework. I'm checking the fit because after welding sometimes you can save distortion if you didn't do correctly. This is the book. And what we are seeing through the years is that an accurate printer can give you an accurate appliance. So this is my first printer. It was a laser DVS six years ago. And we didn't have very good results because the, the metal print, printed parts will not fit on the printed model very well. So we weld everything in a wrong position. So it is very important that your printer is accurate. This is a secondary option, it's an extent. It's a very accurate one. We have better results with this one and I will show you why. This is the model from our first printer and you can see the gap. You see here, there's a small gap. This means that you are going to weld the two parts in the wrong position. So to use this technique, you need a fit like this one a perfect fit before you are starting welding. So more and more people are coming. So another option is not to create the model, is to create the, uh, the appliance directly, okay? To create the STL and set it for printing and then weld the screw. How do we do this? the one piece workflow. We are creating the all appliance in one piece. First of all, you have to ask for the company to give you the STL file of the screw. It's very important to have the STL file important into your system. Then you have to combine this STL file with the STL file of the model. This is the first step. And you have this model here, the STL file of the screw and the model, they are becoming one. Then the first step is to create the insertion of direction for the bands. You are creating like in the previous appliance step by applying the whole structure. The very important thing here is that you are leaving an inner space for the glue that is here is 0, 0 0.2 millimeters. And according to the adhesive that the clinician is using, this space can be changed. Okay, so all the settings, all the parameters for printing are here. So you have the one side ready. Then the other side. I can't hear. Okay, you see here, creating by splitting the same. <clears throat> okay. If I if I'm doing this too fast, please tell me. Okay. Then you can add attachments that we are using it as the debonding handles. Okay, it's the same attachments that we are using on liners. We can use it here. They will print it with the framework. I so want to hear this. So second step is the insertion direction for the bars. Creating the spline. Okay. Uh, hold on. No, uh, let me go on my other computer. Can someone help that person? Adjusting the position of the bar. Let's see. 
using 2D tools. This is very important. With the 2D, you can see exactly the position of the bar under the screw and the groove of the screw. For resident screw, this is a for resident screws, they have a groove under. So in the 2D tool, you can see exactly the groove and the bar pass on it. Okay. You can change the position of the bar at the end if you want, and you see exactly the bar pass through the groove. So, uh, third step, you combine the bar with the bands, okay, and they're becoming one. One side is ready. Then you are going to make the grip. Again, with the bar tool, you can create to the first combined things, the grip, okay, with the bar tool. Combine all the parts. The same procedure is from the other side, okay? And at the end, you have to join these two parts. You had two bars, one in the front, one behind, okay? And you have a final structure that is like this. So at the end, when this is printed, you can put here the grooves of the screw and they fit exactly. This is how they fit after printing. Okay, this is a direct after printing. This is the grooves and they fit inside. We are polishing as the previous appliance with uh, bars and rubbers. In fact, you can create this kind of appliances without a model. You don't need a model. Okay, we, you, you don't need only the 3D model in the software. In the mouth, we can see that the fit is good. The custom bands, how they are in occlusion. Hey, can I ask you how long does it take? Of to course, of course, that? Steve. Please. Steve, do you hear yes. me? Yes, I do. How long does it take to finish that appliance by hand? It takes a long time. It takes a long time. And this is why I recommend the first option. The first option for me is faster. You, you bend the screw easier than to create the appliance in the software. Okay. But the most important for the first option is to have an accurate model. If you don't have a model that the printed parts are fit exactly, you have a problem. Okay. And you're saying that you're saying that you didn't get that in your first printer, your original printer? Yes, we have a DVS, a laser one, six years ago. The the first printers that came on the market, they were not so accurate. Closed systems like MPG Tech that you had, uh, next and 3D systems, and other systems that they are closed with the materials. Okay, that they can produce uh, work for prosthetics. I think they are the best for this kind of uh, applications. Okay. Okay. Yep, go ahead. So a similar procedure, you can make a bar, you can subtract the STL of the screw and leave a mark here. So, after the printing, the, the screw fits exactly on these marks and you can know the position and you can weld it. This is another option. Okay, you can subtract something or add something in the software. But the most important is that you have all the STLs to do it. Okay. A new procedure, and that comes to the Steve's question, a new procedure that saves time Okay, and uh, it saves uh, and has better results than manual polishing is electro polishing. Electro polishing uh, machines are very expensive machines, but in 40 minutes, they can take this structure here, 
from this to this. Okay, so they save time and they have a better quality, but they cost about $60,000. Uh, our printing center here in Athens, they have one. We don't have one in the lab. We are sourcing our work. And I think everybody in the orthodontic lab, they are sourcing, they don't have an SLM machine or uh, an electropolishing machine, so. We can, you can do anything with these techniques. According to your imagination, you can say, change the shapes of the bands, the shape uh, of the bars. Uh, you can create uh, different shapes. Um, it's according to your fantasy, okay? Your limit is on your imagination. And then you can print it. What is the advantage of digital appliances? Handling, handling and digital file, a scan. Offer full digital service to your clients. One visit for the patient, no separators are needed. This is very important. A different way of marketing, increased accuracy, no remakes, improved communication with our clients. Potentially every internal scanner user in the world can be your client. The digital design can change and modify easily and any time. Disadvantages, expensive equipment. You are dependent on computers and machines. Sometimes they crash, they don't work. Software and equipment must be changed from time to time. And this is also expensive. And that was all folks. Okay, let's go to questions now. Okay, unmute yourselves. Uh, that, 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 that's um, um, amazing. I don't think that was... I, 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 thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> I don't think that was amazing, but I was trying, it was my first webinar, so I made the PowerPoint so everybody can understand if they see it for the first time. You did good. Okay. Yeah, great job. Okay, thank you. Please so make it a question. You. So are you subcontracting all this stuff? Like yes. you don't have a centering? No. And is it pretty expensive? Yes, it's about the, the, the cheapest machine is about 120,000 euros. For a, a lab like mine, this is too much. Well, now I think that what he was a, a, ask, asking was um, how, how much per uh, part. How much per part? Yeah. Okay. Uh, here in Greece, we are paying for a band about five euros, is about six dollars, and we pay for the whole appliance about 50 euros. They charging according to the shape and the design of the appliance. So, for a band is five euros, for um, for the whole appliance about 50 euros. A lingua large cost about 20 euros to print. But also, our digital appliances are more, uh, are more expensive than the analog ones. We are charging 140 euros for a digital RPE, and we are charging 75 euros for an analog one. Yeah, it, 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 it's about the uh, same uh, um, um, here, here, Steve, Neil. Um, one, one of the things that we were going to be do, 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 doing at the March conference, which we'll be do, doing at the October con conference, um, is covering uh, pri price prices and suppliers of this. Um, also, also, so there will be a class at the October conference um, on the, the actual fab for KK shoo, shoo, shoo. Um, I mean, it's really just a matter of playing around with the software, but if you, you know someone like you know, with me, I'm going to stop by and bug Socrates in, 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 in a Greece, Greece and get, get them out. Ah, and have him show me, and have him show me while I eat eat like a pig there. So, <laughs> also um, we we have uh, Motion View coming in with software to do these appliances too. That was going to be part of the meeting. Yes. Um, so we we we're still working on that for September. 
to have a reasonable software company support us with software um, in doing these uh, appliances. Mm -hmm. well, let, let me ask you guys what your thoughts are on what's the object I mean what couldn't a doctor just go straight and ignore us and go straight to a centering lab and design it themselves and then have the appliances come straight to them without no digital model no lab tech like couldn't they design it in their office and ignore us what Steve? I mean, that's been. I mean, I've been. I, I've been hearing that a lot for a year, year, years. But the fact of the matter there is is that some doctors will and some doctors won't. Won't. Um, I mean, I remember when I for first was store stored. The day dot dot doctors were actually taught hey hail to make a one hall 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 hallies. And um, a, 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 a lot of them it did um, until their until their practices hit the point, and then until they realized that it was not worth their time to uh, made made make it themselves. Um, really, for a doctor to bypass us, they need to. It's the same reasons in that we're not that that. That uh, well, we are outsourcing the uh, print, print, print thing. Um, we don't have the uh, one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for a printer. Uh, we don't have the seventy thousand or the sixty thousand for the polishing one. Um, and then we just don't have time. Uh, some doctors will be cheap. Some doctors can do it themselves, but. It's the same story that it's been now for 50 year, years. According to my experience, okay, according to my experience here in Greece, nobody wants to bypass you because uh, it's time consuming to create something like this. I, I don't think they want to do it just to take the software. Sometimes we think we can do it, but it is not so easy. Okay, they, they need the lab behind. So I'm not afraid about this. I think that we have to embrace, make it, learn it the best that we can do, and that's it. I'm not afraid about this. I, I'm currently working with doctors that are sending me this type of work that already have software, that already tried it themselves. And when they realize it's so much consuming, they're, they're looking for a to work with. Um, I recently before the I recently had a level of uh, printed. Um, unfortunately, we, we couldn't get it into a fit because of the shutdown. But those are the doctors that are finding interest in it that already have software. In your um, Socrates, when you uh, construct when you construct one of these, what is the time from uh, when you send the scan, when you send it to the uh, outsourcing centering area? What what time frame does it finally get back to the doctor? Uh, we need about uh, forty minutes to design something like this. Okay. And then we send it to the printing center the same day, and we have it back in two days. That's good, because I, I know most of us, I think, are flipping these things in, what, a week? Sometimes the next day we can have it in the lab. We have printed the model, and we create the appliances. So we ask about three, four working days to deliver the appliance. Right. About the same time. Yeah. Another question, please. Don't hesitate. <laughs> so, Socrates, the um, concern that one doctor had on the lower lingo that I had printed was that it opens the bite pretty much. Um, and did, have you run into any problems like that with opening the bite? Yes, sir. I had a doctor that uh, he wanted uh, to create the uh, appliances and uh, he wanted also to create the bands for the lower so it has 
in the mouth four bands like this. But most of the time, because the thickness of the band at the end of the polishing is about 0 0.4, we don't have a problem. Okay. It's according to the bytes that you have, but you can co control this from the software and you can remove these uh, contacts. Okay. So you don't have a problem at the end. You can check that. Right, but then you're waiting. Maybe you didn't down. check the right way. Yeah. Right. But there's not, like, because the band doesn't go down into proximally, you have to rely on that space occlusally for the strength of the band. So when you do that, you need a little bit more thickness, and then that's when you come into the issue of opening the bite. Yes, sometimes they are opening the, uh, you have premature contacts with the, uh, the occlusion surface. Yes, this is a problem sometimes. Right, right, so, right. Uh, so we, we have we haven't seen it yet because we didn't insert the patient, the appliance, but we know when you put it on the model and you put the closed, the adjacent, adjacent bite on it, you realize it opens it. Um, you know, th this is learning to me. We haven't put the appliance in yet, so we'll see when a patient comes in. But you figure if you open for questions, let me ask you. So what is the, uh, what is the solution? Would you virtually articulate it? Yes, you can virtually articulate it and you can adjust the, uh, the design According to this articulation, the software le leaves you to adjust the design according to the movements of the articulator, and it cuts the part that you have a premature contact. But I see. this is okay. sometimes this is not possible because you are going, as uh, Raphael said, you are go going to cut something that you want. Right. Okay. Could you? If you find a tough case, could you maybe post that for us, adjusting the bite, how you do it on the articulator? Yes, I can do that. We can, okay. we, can, we can do another webinar that I will be working on the software. But mm -hmm. for the first time, I want everybody to understand what it is. Sure. Okay, so. Sure. Uh, our next question is, why the, why the next end printer is the best one, you think? for the fit of the models? I, I don't think that is the best one. I think that is a good one. It's a solution that I've made. Okay, so all the closed systems, you have printers like uh, my old printer that you can use any material. They are open printers. You have closed solutions like Nexten and Visiotech and others that the mechanical engineers of the company makes the settings of the materials with the printers. These kind of solutions, they are better for these applications that they need a lot of accuracy. Because okay. sometimes you take things from a metal printer, you take the things from the metal printing and they don't fit in the model. This is not a, uh, the problem from the metal printer. It is the problem from, from your printer or the other printer. So, you must know that your printer is accurate and closed solutions are the best one. The ones that you can create removable dyes and prosthetic applications are the best. Mm -hmm. do, you know, do you know what accuracy your computer is or your printer is at? Uh, I think you mean the resolution of it. The, the microns, your next then, what micron? My, ah, yeah. the, the accuracy, that, this is a misunderstanding. The accuracy, as they explain me next, and it's not always about the microns. Sometimes you can print in 10 microns, sometimes in 20 microns. There are a lot of factors that determine the accuracy of the ending model. So when they are setting these materials, there are a lot of factors that we cannot determine as dental technicians. So I prefer to work with a closed system like Nextent or Envisitech or something that is more expensive for this kind of applications. Because if I try to weld two parts that they don't fit in the model, the appliance at the end, it will not fit us on the mouth. Yeah. And I, I, try, I try a lot of models before Nextent. I try from form labs. I try from other companies. Next end, 
was, was one that was perfect from the beginning without me to do anything. That's what I like. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. And then um, I did just thought that I would throw, throw, throw in here as I've been bit, 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 bit teaching about is read my article. <laughs> um, a thing that Socrates is uh, talk, talk, talking about is, is, is that when printers first hit, um, I was talking to a mechanical engineer who had nothing to do with the industry, but just oh, um, he he was an oh, um, expert in oh, with three 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 D scan scan scanning and oh, uh, print print printing. He wanted to oh, see all with the specs on the no um, ever everything, and then he showed me in the specs where like even though it was printing at a uh, um, hundred my microns that there was a plus minus the differential of a hundred my microns. So what I think that what you see in the newer print print printers is the accuracy is that there's not going to be as high of a differential there. Okay. Another question, please. We have time. Um, how much does that three shape software cost to, um, was it around 5,000 US for the, for the or, yes. orthodontic part? I bought the whole package. When I bought my E3 scanner, I bought it okay. together, but I think they are selling the ortho system about 5,000 euros. So it must be closed. Um, it's about the, eight. It, 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 it's about 8,000, Steve, Steve. Yeah, and you guys, I, I know you told me before you bought a scanner and it gave, gave you a deal on it. Right. I, I think it's 10,000 for like all inclusive, like with the IDB, with the ortho analyzer, okay. with, the, with the, does that kind of sound about right? That sounds about right, about eight to 10. I mean, I mean you, can um, each, you can buy them separate. Yep. I think yeah, um, with, 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 Wit, wit mix is a good source for that for that oh what about them what's that you saying buying it through wit mix or great lakes or, or what yeah. do you mean by they're a good source they're they're um a good source to uh purchase the uh software and the uh and the licenses okay i didn't know what wit mix was involved in that yeah I think there will be other software in the market soon. And uh, with every prosthetic software that creates a cell or a bar or something like this, you can create a, a digital appliance. I, I saw some Italian guys that they create now with a mess mixer an RPE or something. Okay. But Onyx, Onyx, Onyx Chess has a ortho uh, app uh, module that we're releasing in the US. What, what I'm thinking about the appliance designer is that it's a mature software. It is designed to make this kind of appliance so it makes things easier. But every software that you can create a mesh, a cell or a bar can create an appliance eventually. Well, well what's that happened there? I'm sorry, I missed what you said. On On Maybe your Maybe microphone right. is not in the right position. <laughs> yeah, it sounded like you don't she's on Mars. Okay, please try again. Hey, baby. Well, I caught most of it. If you can just like say the name of the company again, please. Onyx. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, it's an option. Onyx Kef program is uh, designed to make appliances. And I think that uh, in US is distributed from, uh, 
for rest of them dealers, correct? Yes. Yeah, yes. Okay. In fact, you can, you can contact, contact me. me. Oh. Yeah. I, I haven't worked with the Onyx Kev. I know the program. But I think all these programs are user dependent. If you're a good user, as you are a good technician, you can make something. It is not always about the software. What, what is a must is a strong computer, a gaming one, like the one that I have here and uh, I'm talking to right now, because these programs are very demanding and heavy. That's all. It is not about the software. Please. Uh, can you tell us the advantage of printing the bars and then attaching the small screw um, compared to just, bring, just printing the bands on the left and right and then bending a standard screw of arms and let's say laser soldering that standard screw with four arms to the two custom bands? Yes, for me there is no, there is, uh, there is no an advantage on it. I prefer okay. just to make the, the bar section with the band, bend the screw as usually in a 3D model, because I don't have to polish all these things, okay? Right. And, and I don't have to pay them, because I have to pay more for the printing center to print something like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think uh, this kind of uh, technique prevail in some countries because uh, most of us, they want to play the super uh, digital technicians, okay? Right. But I don't find an advantage to it. If you have an accurate model, that's the most important. At the end, you, you will have an accurate appliance, the same appliance. It doesn't change anything. And we have to consider about the one thing, the bars, the, the, the thickness of the bar is one and a half uh, millimeter thick, okay? So the wire from the company is stronger than the SLS. SLS structures and SLM, they are uh, grained structures. Wires, they are fiber structures and they are stronger. They have elasticity. SLM yeah. structures at the end, after heat treatment, they are strong, but they don't have elasticity. So if you compare the two things, the screw that comes from the company has an advantage because this bar is a wire, it's a fiber structure. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. The, if the, you the, would, please, please. If you would uh, need to cut any uh, thing on this appliance, it sounds like the metal is extremely hard. Um, how hard would it be to cut, say maybe on, um, on the occlusal area? With carbide parts, it comes pretty easy. It's like grinding uh, an RPD or something. If you are using carbide parts, I don't think it's a problem to grind something like this. I don't know. Hey, it's like hey, grinding common cobalt. It's pretty soft. You can use a soft stone too. It doesn't really have to be a carbide, right? And it'll shine me, back up. For yeah, me, it'll shine all the up. best for this kind of, of work. Right. Okay. Yeah, it comes off pretty easy and polishes rubber wheel and polish, and that's it. Would you would you solder the forearms? Let's say you're doing uh, two separate crowns. Would you solder? the RPE first with the forearms and then do all the pro post-processing to... Uh, no, no, I, no. I, I, I polish the two parts and okay. then I, I, I'm going to do the welding. Okay, gotcha. Yay. Yeah, why would... Oh, go ahead, Chris. Oh, uh, no, JJ, that's not proper social distancing. <laughs> I was going to say that, but I didn't want to say that. <laughs> Leave it to the Pollock. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> we're safe. That's you know, proper social distancing <laughs> in Poland. <laughs> we're, we're, 
We're a little younger than you, Chris. We'll be safe. <laughs> oh. That's not nice. <laughs> you're, you're already retired or semi-retired. <laughs> I'm supposed to be in Poland right now, so leave me alone. I'm not having a good day. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> For us here in Greece, it's Easter time. Okay, in Sunday is the Easter celebration. But uh, they say that uh, a neighbor can call the police if you grill something on your yard. So it's a fun Easter for us, okay? <laughs> so please, guys, Steve. Yeah, what I want to ask you a, a couple questions. If I'm understanding this correctly, you're centering the arm in the band, which is now created like a crown band, you get that part back. You're saying that you polished that yourself instead of letting the company just do it all inclusive, which would kind of make sense to me to just let them do it. But it, apparently, it's a little probably more expensive to let them polish exactly. it and everything. Exactly. Okay. And then when it comes back to your lab, you have these two. Let's say it's just a basic Hyrax, a very basic Hyrax. So you have the two parts in the band. My workers here is picking. It's picking up on me. Um, then you're going to take like a forested screw and bend it, and then hook up your puck. I mean, I'm I'm sorry. Do it with puck welding to save money and not have to do that welding or um, that polishing. Is that why you were getting at? But the yes. question I had for you was, when you have these parts come back to the lab, do you have to cut the 3D model and see them? No. Uh, into a, a new model. Just to I'm getting a lot of feedback from everybody because someone on I can't hear. I've been in wire. <laughs> He's been in the wire. Someone's working. <laughs> Hey, stop working. <laughs> okay. So, um, it, 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 it's best ever, everyone if you keep yourself on on mute unless you're asking a, a quick question or an uh, well, answering one. I found that out through other Zoom me 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 things. This guy is a pro. Then you might have to leave, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay, please, Steve. Make the yeah, very simply, you're, you're having these, these appliances or the, the pieces come back and then do you have to reset them onto a model? Like you have to cut the model and like reseat it and then go ahead and bend your screw and puck weld. But don't you have to reseat it or does the software, you create a 3D printed model with like the digital removed so it easily seats on there? No, you know uh, when you make the digital model, the first step is to remove your undercuts. So, okay. so if you remove the undercuts, when they come back from the printing center, they fit exactly. If you so your cut, model is like printed with the undercuts already made, like already on the model, like your the, model is missing the undercuts and then you can just seat it the, right down. The model that you designed the bands Okay, it is a model that the undercuts are removed. The model that we are printing is the initial model with the undercuts. But because the design, it is made on the model that you have removed the undercuts, okay. it fits exactly after printing. I don't know if this is the question. Uh, so yeah, you're answering it. Okay. Hey, I've got to get going because I got to go to another seminar, <laughs> webinar. <laughs> Okay. I'm going to that COVID <laughs> webinar with the vision. Okay, but I can leave with that. Okay. <laughs> now you're the best, buddy. We'll see you again. Okay. We're totally, pre oh. totally appreciate you guys doing this and everyone getting together. It's a good to ask questions from different, like have so many people think in different ways and help each other. So it's awesome. Totally appreciate it. Okay. Thank you for being with us. Right. Bye, everybody. Okay. Bye. Take it easy, Steve. Bye, Chris. Bye. Bye, Raphael. Can you, so, can you show us the removal of the undercuts 
on a model before designing the the STL part? Yes, I, I will have to open my software. I never done it at home. Just wait, okay? If, if anybody else is interested, I'll give you the one. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, it's really like a, a whole other thing of like, um, um, it's, it's, it goes deeper into, um, um, it goes much deeper into the uh, saw soft where than what we okay. have used so far, so far. So, but that, but that will be the best thing yes. yeah, before yes. designing the crown, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, even even with uh, um, all the other things that we would do, um, um, it's best to uh, re re remove the uh, um, undercut. Um, it's not that hard. Um, I think it's like a step or two, right? Right, Socrates. Yes, it is just a step. Okay. Do you hear me all? Uh, yeah. Let me see if I can open the so I can show you. Yeah, you're. I mean, there's somebody making unnecessary noise, messing us up. <laughs> Have been in okay. Oh, had 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 another while uh, Socrates is doing this. Tell Dan that if Forescident was a sponsor, that they could sponsor an entire web webinar on the new software. Wow. <laughs> hey, I have a question about about uh, Great Lakes. They have a, a 3D printer, very cheap 3D printer. I don't know if you know about that. It costs like $2,300. Do you know the quality of that? I, I do. I yeah, they sell it there. The Unizy. The Slash Plus. Yes, is anyone else switching I have? Can you repeat, please? The Great Lakes machine that they sell, it's not a very good printer. It's just a starter for like an office to do ethics. Um, there's complaints, the reserve tank leaks. Um, if you print two models on the same patient and do vacuum forms and switch to vacuum forms, they're not accurate. Oh, no good. <laughs> so it's no, it's a it's a machine to have in the office to to do suck downs. That's all it's for. You don't want to get it. You don't want to get fancy with it. Just do a few suck downs, and they're not going to fit 100 percent, but close. You know, 98 percent, I guess. Okay, good to know. Yeah, um, you can even call Great Lakes. And actually, they have it. They have some in their lab that they're testing, and though that's that's what's going on with this printer. The the, the tank, uh, you know, you know the, the the cartridge should not be engaged because it leaks, and they're recommending instead of keeping it engaged, just pour the resin into the tank when it's needed. Because it's messy when you leave it and it starts leaking. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, you see all my screen? No. Okay. I have a question about our. Um, uh, conference this fall. Uh, 
Are we, is Christopher is, um, are you going to be addressing, oops, are you going to be addressing uh, our, um, how we're going to be able to do this in America? If there's already a centering here, or if someone's going to be guarding it, uh, how are we going to be doing that here in the U.S.? Oh, yeah, um, um, it, 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 it's there. Um, we owe, um, um, we, uh, we, um, uh, uh, we actually, in the last couple of days, um, we got a company uh, on, on board um, to uh, d d display um, at the uh, show uh, uh, to uh, be an exhibit or at the uh, show. Um, it's being done now. Um, I think that they're based up in uh, Il 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 Illinois, I think. I think, but just yeah, I'm. I'm I mean, but yeah, yes. I mean, like um, the uh, well, the whole point is, is that if a company is not there, we'll 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 be able to talk talking about the other companies that they would do do. Okay. Do you all see Sounds my screen now? Can see what I'm doing. Guys? Yes. Okay, you see my screen? Yes. So this is not perfect because it's a liner model. With right click, there is a remove undercuts. You can see it here. This option. Okay. Then you have to make the insertion direction that you want according to that how you move on the screen model, the insertion direction of the undercurrent change. Okay. So then you say wax streaming. And the software will cover the undercuts automatically. Can we please get everyone else? Uh, can everybody go on mute so we can hear you know, hear better? Okay. So you see, basically. It covers, can you kind of can you kind of start all over real quick, if possible? Yes, of course. Okay, and this is the undercuts that the software is uh, is seeing now. Okay, so it cover up. You see, according to the insertion that you give it. So I will do it again. If you change the insertion, it, it will cover a different, it will cover the, uh, the undercuts from a different angle. Okay, so. And if you don't like them, you can manipulate them manually. You can take this tool, by this tool, you can add in the place that you want to cover something, okay? And you see that the software has a very good response. This is why you need a strong computer for it. Let's say that we have an undercut here that the software didn't cover. We can cover and we can change the depth of the tool or we can remove. If we don't like something, we can remove it. Okay. And then when we are going to press done next, the undercuts are covered. But if we don't like them, we can manipulate them again. We can say modify model in this stage, okay? And we can go 
and add more material or or remove some if we don't like it or smooth something okay questions please thank you that looked good okay I have a it is understandable. I don't know, Jay. Jay. Uh, yes, uh, you mentioned earlier about um, giving a, a space of what 0. 0.02 millimeters or two millimeters. Is that to uh, accommodate for the cement that's going to be put in there? Exactly, according to the cement that the commission is going to use. You are using an inner space uh, for transpond is 0, 0 0.2 or for ultra band log. I, I don't use any other inner spaces. I leave this un untouched in the software and I'm using always 0, 0 0.2. Some other labs they say that is, if it is a thicker adjective, you must use 0, 0 0.3. But I don't think this is very important. The important is just to leave it a minimum space, as you do okay. in rounds. Okay, good to know. Okay. I have a question. Of course. Hello? Okay, so my question is, have you ever had an appliance to come back from the printer that didn't fit the, the model? Yes, most of the times with my previous printer, and the problem was not from the metal printing, it was my model. Okay. Because um, some, some, you must be very sure for your printer, why? Because you have a digital impression, you don't have the plaster impression, you just have the internal scan, and you have to return something that is accurate to the doctor. So. You must be sure that the model that you are trying the appliance is accurate. And sometimes in many printers, it isn't. Okay, so here, maybe you can help me troubleshoot this. I have two models that I printed at the same time. One for upper uh, RPE, one for lower lingual. When the appliances came back from the metal lab, the lower lingual fit perfectly. The RPE one looks like there was a shrinkage issue somewhere because there was a three, four millimeter shortness on the bar. In other words, it looked like you needed to extend the bar four millimeters. Another so when I cut the bands, when I cut the bands individually, they yeah. wouldn't fit, they were tight. So I'm thinking the metal was shrunk, not the model. As I, as I hear it, it was exactly what I'm showing you right now. You didn't cover the undercuts before doing the band. If there is an undercut on the maximal perimeter of the tooth, the band will not fit. You have to cover the undercut so the band will pass freely. Understand? Although, yeah, I, although the bar was four millimeters short. Hmm. It doesn't so make if sense. it was short, I'm I think if it was short, then the image itself was shrunk because the bands wouldn't fit. I don't know. Never but happened. If to I me. wanted to make the bands fit, yeah. never. Okay. All right. I, I ran into that issue. I didn't troubleshoot it yet because we, you know, we, we we got shut down. But that is an issue I, I ran into. For me, the most important thing is that if you know for sure that you have an accurate model you know that you deliver something that is accurate. If you are not sure about your model, you're not sure about the appliance that you deliver. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I guess the best good way to do is use those bands and when the patient comes in, see if they fit the patient. And then yes, I will know it's a model. But you cannot send only the bands and for a try-in and then take them back. This is a yeah, very... In my, in my situation, it's a little different. I'm inserting it. Ah, okay, okay. Then you can yeah, do it. So I have the advantage of see, you know, working with the patient, seeing if it fits or not. So, for, you know, for I'll me, fabricate it. 
I'll no, fabricate no, no. regular pints, but I'll have those bands and see if they fit the patient. Okay, for me this is not an option because uh, I, I have to send all the appliance. So, right. So, as we have the program ready, let's make a band. Okay, how do we, we say create cell? Okay. Okay. And then we have to make the insertion direction again. And then create cell. So I'm going here. Okay. After the spline is done, you can manipulate it. It is very easy to correct it. Okay. And then every time, ah, here are the settings. That, here we have one millimeter. This is not correct. We go for 0 0.7. 0 0.7 is good because after grinding, it will go to 0 0.5. And this is a good thickness. Okay, and here is the inner space. And also you have to check remove undercuts and you say preview. Then the software needs some time and it make the bounce. Okay, and then you want to cut the upper surface. Okay, let's make it big over here. And you take this tool, go here. And this is the part that the software saw you that you want to keep. No, reverse direction. Okay. You can manipulate it. Okay. And then and that's where you can take out contacts. Yeah. Yeah. I will show you about the contact. And then if you want, you can also smooth it. Because you see here it is not good. So you can take this too. and smooth the edges. Do you, do you, do you kind of want to smooth it to a knife edge or not really? Yes, it is better to be rounded like this. You see? You can do that when polishing too, right? Of course, but it's, it is easier here. And if you want to, uh, to look at with the antagonist, you can go here. Okay. You can take the articulator. Okay. And then here and here. And you can see if you have contacts that you don't want. So. You see, you see that area here with red? This is premature contacts. So if you say adapt design, the program automatically will change the design according to these contacts. Wow, that's so cool. And now you don't have them. It was the problem that Raphael told before. Okay. And then you say done. You can change the color if you want to see it. Okay, to see it correctly. And that was the creation of a band, it's about one minute. And then 
you say you want to do the bar, right click again, create a bar, okay. Again, you have the insertion direction, first of all, and then define spline. You can do it like this to see through it if you want. To see exactly. It's like bending wire somehow, okay? Right. I had a question on that bar. Do you cement that bar up against the teeth or you keep cement away from it? No, you don't cement. You, they only cement the band. The band, okay. The but other thing the is, yeah. the doctor's concern was on the bar is that the bar is so wide and so tight against the tooth, what prevents it from food getting in there and there, the patient not being able to clean? You can choose between safes. I will choose here a round safe. So here you have a selection from bars. I will take spleen or not spleen, round it is too okay, circular. You see? Right. Okay. And then so th with a shift button, you can put it exactly where it's supposed to be. Right. Yeah. So, you know, the one concern the doctor had, he would prefer just a straight bar there because when you contour it in like that, the possibility of food staying under there, it's just going to be greater than if it was just a straight round bar, it's easier to brush there and, and yes, get okay. food if, out. If you prefer it, it's, it's, it's very easy to change it. You can do anything. Okay, so have you... Have you had any of those issues, uh, you know, discussed with any of your doctors? No, I have it. I have it. Yeah. No, okay, good. Um, that, that was one of the first questions that popped but up from one of my doctors. You can manipulate the bar according to the shape uh, exactly as you want it. This is not a problem. Okay. Okay. You have a full selection of bars here for any applications so you can change it and so if you wanted a straight round bar you have that option on that software and no you take the rounded bar and you you can do it like this you can go here clear and then you can make it straight i see okay so create a bar and it is right. straight okay okay Yep. Okay. Good. Basically, you can do anything that you want. <laughs> right. Right. Great. Okay. And then when you do that at the end, because a tricky point is that you don't know if you are inside the other model, correct? You don't know it. Right. But not. So at the end, after you are happy with it, you can say, that this model with control button, this one and this one, okay. Create combined models, okay. And you can say subtract. Okay. And you see, yeah. the bar. it cuts some of the bar that touch the model. But if you want, you can smooth it here. And go and oh, smooth. Basically, it's lab work with the software, nothing else. And then right. you can say that these parts, I want to combine these parts. So done, and I want to combine this with this. Combine, and then you have one part ready. Socrates, as far as welding with the puck, is it easier to weld to these uh, printed bands than it is to regular bands? Yes, because they are. A, yes, because they are thicker. I have, okay, I have a very hard time soldering to bands. 
or welding to bands? Much easier. It is much I mean, easier. I've had it for a year now, and I'm still, yeah, it's still a pain in my butt. Yes, I know what you're meaning. So another question, please. Uh, now you did the bar with the software. Um, for a starter, the easiest point, wouldn't be just easier just to print a left and a right band by itself without absolutely nothing else, and then just do the straight wire with a, with a forearm screw afterwards, just, just, just for beginners, let's say. No, for, for me, it is very easy to create a bar. Okay. The, the, fa the fastest way is to create the bar in the band and then to bend the screw in the model as regularly do. Okay, got it. But I'm talking for post-processing, uh, saving of money or time, post-processing that bar, because now you got to clean it up or pay for the, um, for the finishing. The fastest way for me is to do exactly like this, to create okay. the bar here. Because if you think about it, you have to solder that bar or to weld it. So you need some time for this. Well, you'll be soldering to the band anyhow, because you'll be soldering the screw. The bar just becomes part of the, let's say that, let's say that bar is out of a 030036 wire. It's all one soldering now. You're still soldering at the same, at the same time, the bar and the screw to the band. I don't know. I found it easy to do it like this. I think yeah. either way, you have to finish something. You either have to finish what you solder or weld, or you have to finish this wire. Right. I'm just looking for shortcuts at the beginning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> otherwise, either way, you're, you're if, if it was a full made appliance, like the second option, and I have to weld on the screw, I would prefer that the printing center to bring it to me polished, because it is a lot of polishing to do. Right. So th that's what I'm trying to limit, the, the thinker metal polishing, because I heard that that is tough. So for, for me, this option is the best, the bar and the band, the fastest okay. one. Gotcha. OK. Any other question for the software? Okay, so I will close okay. the software. So guys, Thank you, Socrates. please stay wow. safe, okay. It was fascinating to do this from the other corner of the world, huh? Yes, what do you absolutely. Think? absolutely. Awesome. Thumbs up. Okay. Before we go, uh, Raphael, can you fill, up, fill us in more on the motion view software? Uh, generally yeah. so that was supposed to be part of the uh, conference uh, we had to postpone but I was working with uh, with Chris and Socrates too um, to try to bring in affordable software to the group um, we understand that uh, tree shape is great software but many small labs cannot afford it so we were trying to put a plan together where we can change that and so I've been working with uh, Motion View for since uh, 2013 now. I have the software. Uh, they've been around since 1982, strictly doing ortho only. And I think that's where the key is. Uh, Three Shape, you know, started with, uh, you know, GP, and then they, they moved into uh, ortho. Um, they have, you know, a ton of money to do this. Um, but Motion View has only done and they they have the same tools available mm -hmm. however they don't have the money three shape has to be you know worldwide recognized so they are a small company out of Tennessee um, we're trying to see if we can bring it into the group offer it to the group and see if it helps the group grow small labs uh, particularly uh, so between um, Chris and uh, Socrates and I uh, we, we're gonna you know try to uh, bring this uh, to the group and hope that um, it helps everyone. So how much, 
I haven't really, we haven't really looked into it. So how much can you do on it? You can clean up models. You can just 3D design an RP like, like Sorkatis just did. Or what, what are everything, everything three shape is, has a cap, 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 capacity to do the motion view can do it. They oh, have wow. all the tools. It's, it's, it's more friendly a user. Um, there's just so, so much you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, and and pricing is going to be somewhere like half. So if if we're at eight thousand with uh, th uh, three shade, uh -huh. I think we're like around four thousand with motion view. But okay. you know we ha we have we still you know it's premature. We're still working on numbers. Uh, you know I think we need Socrates and 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 Chris to you know for all of us to get together and just just put it together. It's just going to take a little time. Mm -hmm. We we were doing this uh, you know like on six week notice. Um, to try to get it to Texas. It started in um, Chicago with Chris and I and uh, Tiffany also. Um, we, we, we spoke about it on our last day at the meeting and uh, we, we've been moving forward with it. Um, so let's, let's not keep Tiffany out. Um, she, she's also um, is, is in this uh, also. Right, cool. Okay, good to know, keep us posted. Yes, yes. Um, so we'll just keep moving forward. Hopefully we'll have this meeting in September and we'll have some good, good stuff on, on new software in September. Excellent. October. 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 <laughs> well, you know, I, I booked it for September to be there in September. <laughs> so in my, head, in my head is already September. <laughs> it is like, yeah, it's like, it's like it's me with my previous webinar. I did one, one hour before, you know. <laughs> For only four persons. <laughs> Central Time, Indiana, not Central Time. It was a region in Indiana, Central. And when I Google it, it was Central Time. You understand? And I took this time. <laughs> Sorry for this. Okay. I, had, I had one more question about buckle attachments on the 3D printed bands. How often are you attaching like an 022 slot or anything on the buckle besides the little nugget? to help the orthodontist remove the appliance? Is it, is it in every appliance or? We are adding also attachments in the lingual side, but upon request, we are making, we are welding attachments as bump, as usual. Okay. And, uh, and you and laser, you laser solder those, right? You just laser solder 022 mm -hmm. bracket mm -hmm. for a spot. On exactly, the... what, how, it's exactly what we are doing in bump appliances. Okay. In the analog ones. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank Excellent you. opinions um, from some of you guys. I see on my social media about Blender for dental. Are any of you familiar with Blender? I mean, they seem to have the capabilities to do ortho also. What are your thoughts? I don't even know what you're ta -ta talking about. Is Blender software, right? Yes. Okay. I, and they I, have an I, extension for dental, correct? I'm sorry, what? They have an extension of the software for dental in the Blender. Yes, okay. yes. It is something you, you guys might want to look at, but uh, Mike Tenecker or something, he's one of the head guys there but he's always putting um, videos, at least I'm, I'm you know, uh, connected with him and their software seems to be pretty good. That all might be something you wanna look at. All, all the softwares are user dependent, okay? If you uh -huh. know the software well, okay, <coughs> you can work. I worked very well with my previous version of Ortho Analyzer for liners and I'm working well with a, today version of 2019, okay. I think that the Blender software is good. I don't know if it is good for ortho. What they are doing in 3C and in onyx Cave is that they, they have the things organized for exactly the appliance that we want to do. They have organized the workflows in such a matter that is friendly user. But I think in the future, we will have also other softwares that will be easy to use. Maybe with a blender, you can create an appliance. I don't think it's so easy as 3Shape is because 3Shape software, it is organized for it. 
I can see that. That that makes sense. They do have um, Blender. I noticed about uh, six months ago or a year ago, they added the ability to make ortho models, and they were really nice, very nice. What I checked into, it's seventy nine dollars to uh, sign up. Now I don't know for sure if that's a monthly fee of seventy nine dollars or if that's a one time. Uh, but you can buy certain parts of it. But it, I'm just throwing that out there because it may be something you may want to check into. It, it's something else uh, that could be available to us. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll read you chat to it with them about the uh, show as, as well. I mean, just see hey, how many people we, 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 we can get. I mean, because at this point, I didn't know that there were three she shape will not be at the show because they don't like me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I pissed them off. <laughs> is that possible? Is that possible, Chris, to be someone who... <laughs> that's, and that's how, that's how our conversation started with Chris and you know, me working with Emotion View. I offered to bring it in. Um, if this blender, uh, Gail, if you if you have more information on it, if you want to bring it in, the ideal is to try to get a good software company that we can rely on, uh, that's user friendly, and and share it with the group. Um, I've, I'm bringing in Motion View. Maybe you can do some research with with Blender and and bring it in. Chris just said he's open to it. Um, it's it's just basically you know sharing what we know, and see if it would help the group. Um, so yeah. That, that would be great. I had not heard of Motion View until today, so I'm going to be uh, checking on them and looking them out. Right. It's, it's Ortho Insight by Motion View. They've been around since 1982, so establishing uh, software for ortho, strictly ortho. Um, they haven't reached out to the lab community, and that's where I'm trying to bring them in. They, they uh, you know, just sell to, to doctors, the software to doctors. Um, but I think they have a better chance if, if they're recognized in the lab community because the software is, is good. Well, There's another one. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I think from the Chicago conference, there was a one called Delta Face. Is that right, Chris? Yes, that, that, that one is brand new uh, based in uh, France. Yeah. They sent a demo over, and I mean, I don't do digital yet, so I don't really know what what needs to be in the software, but it seemed pretty user friendly from what I played around with. So, yeah, they 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 were sent up with me a a da, 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 as well, but I just don't have a PC anymore, so <laughs> I can't really even play 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 with it. And I'm just on the Mac now, so you know, yeah. the software is as good as the support that the company behind it is. So yeah. for Europe, maybe it's reshaped. From, for US, maybe it's another company. Uh, for me, the important thing is that they have a good support. When you pick up the yeah. phone, you call them to support you. But I cannot speak for you because I am not a guy from the US. I don't work in the US. Here in Europe, I can find support from reshaped. But maybe in US it's different. So you know better which company offers you the best support. It is not about only pricing when you are, when you are thinking about software. It's about the support that you have when we, because you will need it. Okay. Right, absolutely. <laughs> you got that, world need <laughs> Support is very important. You want to pick up the phone when you're having an issue and you want to speak to somebody. You don't want to leave a message. You don't want to call back. Uh, my experience with Motion View has been that very few times I've called for support, and and I, I don't know how many texts they have there, but when they are busy, uh, very rare, um, they they do call back right away. So I I have not had that issue. There is a support fee, a monthly support fee of ninety dollars for that service, and I believe it's like two hours of support per month. Um, um, that's my experience with with Motion View, but but I agree with Socrates. Uh, support is very important. So, gentlemen, 
Chris, do you want to say something before we ending the meeting? Or some, someone else? Um, just come and see us in October in Texas. <laughs> yes, I have already changed my tickets. <laughs> I, I was waiting on the phone one hour. <laughs> if, if the... If Lufthansa is the company that I'm flying exists after this, <laughs> we close after this, I will come for sure. Okay. I would like to address something to Nicole. Um, I saw on Facebook where you are going to be selling the the mask guards. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, the. Uh... So Cadmus is who I use my 3D printing with, um, and they are printing off face shields and mask fitters. And so there's info on my Facebook page about it. Um, and I just got done putting together a PDF, like instructions for the mask fitters, because those are custom fit. Um, it's actually really cool. There's a, a uh, app you download, and, I don't think every phone supports it, but you just put it and you turn and it scans your face and it creates a STL file, I guess, for those it, mask fitters. It, 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 it's, the, it's the iPhone 11. Does it have to be that one? I don't know which ones it has to be. I just know some phones don't support it. Right. But, um, so yeah, that's something <laughs> we're kind of collaborating on together. I've already gotten like 44 face shields sold. And so, and it's offices. I mean, they're going to need them. Yeah. From what I understand, the ADA is going to require all staff members to wear face shields, even when we go back to normal, um, just for protection. So, oh, yeah. So one final thing, uh, how are men doing with haircuts? I went bald. <laughs> I'm about to be shaved my, my, myself, so it's coming soon. <laughs> my is growing. Uh, this is what, one week now, it's growing back. I just went, went with the clipper and stay natural, quarantine, and not dyeing my beard. My hair's still black. <laughs> but I, I, I dye my beard because I don't want people to think I dye my hair, so I make it match. <laughs> so because I didn't have any hair, <laughs> you gotta go out. <laughs> uh. I, I wore a hat. I don't want to freak you guys out. Whoa, Raphael looks a, a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, wait a second. where's mine? <laughs> I have recorded the meeting. I don't know if it is okay for you to upload it in the group. It is. Yeah. Yeah. For, for all of you. Yeah. Okay. We all agree. Be, be, because my next visit is in Texas, and maybe if Tiffany disagree, maybe I have problems, you know. <laughs> we have guns there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so ready to have all y'all here and go eat some barbecue. Yep. Oh, I'm ready. Me too. So, Big digital hug, or do it like this. Is it Corona? Okay. <laughs> corona, <laughs> corona, corona handshake. Handshake. Okay. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank, 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 thanks. It's a lot into a sa 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 Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very yes. much, Akuti. Right. Stay safe, everybody. All right. Be, be yeah. safe. Thank you. Thank See you this fall. Bye bye. All right. See you later. Thank Goodbye. you. Bye. Stay safe.